Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Keep Productive, it's Francesco. Today, what I thought I'd do with you guys is show you around how I'm using Sunsama. Now, I've been using Sunsama for just over three months now, and I transitioned over to it from Todoist. Now, if I, I really didn't have any problems with any Todoist, so if you want to go back and check out any of my other videos about Todoist, but the main reason was sort of transitioning over something that helped me plan my day a bit more, and it's sort of Sunsama Motion and Aki Flow, these sort of new daily planner concepts really interested me. So I got started. This video isn't sponsored by Sunsama, but we do have an affiliate link if you do decide to check it out for yourself. But I just wanted to show you in and around how I'm using the application to separate things out. Okie dokie, so this is inside of Sunsama and I'm gonna show you around a few of the elements that I particularly like about the application, how I'm using it. So I wanna dive into the sort of the kanban -y week view, which I quite like. So the way that you plan inside of Sunsama is by viewing your week ahead. One thing uh, I don't like about it is that you can't remove Saturdays and Sundays, but any a major issue really. Although obviously it does come in handy when you've got personal items. So you can separate, and what I've been doing more recently is separating out tasks. For example here, you can see that I've got channels with Otto, our little boy, work, and personal as well. So that's been quite helpful for sort of breaking stuff down. So you can see that the work sort of area is sort of nicely organized. The feature that sort of really sold me on Sunsama, uh, very small in essence, like you could technically go for a planning process like this with Todoist or another application, but I think that just the ease of it was really nice, is the planning function. So if you press P, what will come up is basically ways to organize the next day. So for example, oh, I think I did it for today. For example, if I go to plan Thursday, so I'm planning tomorrow. And uh, as you can see, you can start adding tasks here, something that you might need to do for the day. And you've got a sort of work calculated amount of time that is going to be spent. So in this case, this time remaining for work is one hour 50 estimated. So what's really nice about this is it brings up not only your Google Calendar, any Todoist, which you can drag in for tasks, and but it brings up your weekly objectives, which is really nice because you can sort of align what you're doing for the week with it without having to jump across applications. So for example, these are the sort of objectives. So I can be like, okay, what can I do to really push towards those goals? I can even bring in any backlogs as well, which I quite like. So if I've got any things that aren't necessarily given uh, time to yet, then I can do that using this. Or I can just go next if I'm comfortable with what's on my list. Now I already started doing this already. Next step is sort of what can wait. So you can drag anything that needs to wait and you can move it across to either tomorrow, the tomorrow of tomorrow, and the next week, which is quite easy. So you can sort of be a very, if you've if they've worked out that you're being very sort of overloading, this will come up with orange or red and you can give yourself a little bit of less sort of workload to do. So you can then actually finalize tomorrow by dumping it on your calendar. And this is really cool. So you can just drag it onto your calendar and that will sync with your Google calendar, whether you've got work or whether you've got a personal one as well. You can add both of them, which is quite nice. And as you can see, it's brought into my personal task too when planning the day. So you can just plan your work day if you go to all um, on work, the chat work channel. But it's really helpful, for example, just for it's had that ease of sort of a planning process. You can do it for your week as well. So these weekly objectives up here can be used uh, to plan ahead. So for example, if I wanted to go to weekly planning, you can then sort of review your last week. And what happens is then what basically goes into next week is like, how can you associate how can you associate tasks that are on your weekly objectives and how much time are you allocating to it per day so it really does help you with those overall higher level objectives so one thing uh, i also like is the focus function this is a really small feature in in premise but it blocks out everything else and just keeps you focused on what's ahead for the day because i know seeing like the first time i was using it seeing this sort of like blah in front of you like everything you've got to do is quite stressful but if I went on to work mode and just focus then I've only got my work stuff and it's only what's in today and that also allows me to see the, the upcoming 
The only thing that I, I'd say is a little bit of a pain is if you don't complete stuff. So, for example, if you complete a task on your list, but you've time blocked it in your calendar, you can't like you can remove it from the calendar here, but it doesn't do it automatically for you, which is a bit of a shame. But again, that might be a bit too complicated with the sync that might be available. Now, what else do I want to show you guys? So the other sort of shutdown feature is really cool. So if, for example, I want to allocate a shutdown time, what happens is when I finish my day, it reviews what you finished today, what you didn't get done, and it gives you a total time of how much you spent in it with tracking. And then it helps you plan your next day more effectively. And also one thing I like as well is, for example, like let's say I'm in doing this uh, YouTube recording. I really love this feature because it really helps you to focus a bit more. It's just pressing play on it. What's really nice is it actually starts a timer. So I've actually been doing this for about 20 minutes <laughs> and I can carry the timer on, but you can change whether you've planned it, add some subtasks and some comments and notes, which might be useful. And also give yourself a nice break. You can start a timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or you can close this view and go back to it. But I just really like that sort of bit of zoom in. Everything's blocking out. It's even more effective than focus mode. I didn't really use calendar view. Don't really find it as helpful for myself. The other thing I find a little bit painful is that the application, if you're zooming a bit too fast, it sort of does a little bit of jumping. I think that's just a bug that they have at the moment, but just something that's a little bit, potentially a little bit painful <laughs> inside of the application. Um, but let's obviously, you know, we can't can't all be perfect with some applications in terms of its structure. Now, I'm just thinking of other stuff. I like the, the ability to do dark mode. The mobile application is super simple. It's more of a viewer than it is a an actual management system like this. So I quite like that because I never really used to do this in that concept. Like I never really aggressively planned. I always used the desktop to sort of plan tasks and, and stay ahead. One thing I really like is being able to plan uh, specific days in advance. That's really nice. But overall, I've been using this application for like four months now. It's been quite a while. And I found myself to be definitely a lot sort of more intentional with what tasks I'm doing, mainly because it prompts me and nudges me to actually be more intentional. And I also set more, I, I'm closer to my weekly objectives. Although I don't use the weekly planning feature as much as I should, I now, since discovering this feature, have found to be a lot calmer with it and sort of focusing on the sort of holistic side, which is quite nice. So that's a little bit about how I use Samsama. As you can imagine, it's a little bit pricier. It's one of those more premium options that's on the market at the moment. So going from something like Todoist that was $36 a year to something that's like 150 plus, depending on what price you go with, is expensive, naturally. And I think that's what some people probably have with a problem with a lot of the pricing and it's it's totally dependent on your budget and it's totally dependent on whether it is suitable for you as well but as you can imagine it's just something that some people like uh, to spend a bit more and i'm somebody that reviews productivity applications so having some of the more premium is more beneficial to helping me to sort of uh, analyze the market and there is a big sort of uh, a big sort of flourish in these premium productivity applications i think in the next year to do these applications will feel a lot of struggle and these sort of daily planners might start to take reins as the new to-do list applications. But a very interesting concept. I really like how they've put their app together above some of the ways that, say, Motion, AccuFlow are using it at the moment. But finding it really enjoyable, ease of use is, is a lot easier. But as you can imagine, there's compromises in comparison with, say, Todoist. But one thing is the capture functions. Don't find the capture as fast as likes of Todoist, but Again, I'd never find an application that's faster than capturing in, than inside a Todoist. But then again, they're developing at a good rate, so I can imagine they might look to improve this. But anything I do add, I add to backflow, uh, backlog. And it's also changed the way that I've been doing stuff. I'm not capturing as much as I used to, which I'm also collecting the good stuff, um, which is sort of like a nice fallback from that. But anyway, folks, hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments below uh, what application you're using at the moment and how you're finding it. I uh, really just to catch up on how everyone's using it. But again, I just want to share how I'm currently using this application. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I always find it difficult to talk about like Sansaba because it's such a, and all of these other applications, because although I'm using one of them now, it's such a high price application. It's out of people's budgets for a lot of people. I'm aware of that. and. I, sometimes I find myself being guilty for using it. 
but then again it's it's obviously uh, something I'm quite uh, close to because the my natural industry at the moment but I thought uh, you know I'd, I'd, I'd share the sort of how I'm using it at the moment Anyway, folks, a big thank you. Hopefully you found this video useful. Feel free to like this video. Feel free to comment, share it with anybody if you think they're using Sunsama. And you can check Sunsama out below uh, using the link too. Thanks very much, folks, and I'll see you very soon. Cheerio.